Hey, what is going on guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here to bring you the three game NBA main slate on Sunday. Before I get into the video, if you guys are new to the channel, my name's DK. I make daily videos and live stream for NBA and NFL slates on DraftKings. I'm now making videos for NBA Top Shot as well. If you're unable to watch these videos, I also upload an Apple podcast. So we'll link down below. It's called the DK DFS Show. If you're interested in signing up for premium content, offer that on patreon.com and esports package, which includes Call of Duty and CSGO, as well as an NBA package. And finally, I want to thank Prize Picks for sponsoring the show. Um, if this is your first time watching these videos or you're not familiar with price picks, the idea is you are taking over under on fantasy points. So they have eight players up for tomorrow. Uh, they're probably going to have more up throughout the day. So, for example, Devin Booker is projected for 38 fantasy points. Do you like the under? Do you like the over? That is basically the idea. And you can mix and match sports. So they have March Madness. They have college basketball. They have uh, everything. So um, if you guys want to sign up, use the code DKDFS. DKDFS, all one word, link down below. You get 100% match up to $100. So if you put $100 in, you get $200 to play with. And yeah, with that out of the way, let's jump into the video. So before I talk about players and the prices, for this three game slate, we can look back and line up here from Saturday. And well, last couple of days, all right, let's, I just, you, you can't make, you can't make some of this stuff up that has happened. I literally, I'm not kidding. The Michael Carter Williams news got me so upset. I couldn't even make a video for you. I mean, I, you know, I made videos for, for Patreon, but I, I literally didn't, didn't have it in me to make it for, for, for YouTube because Oh my gosh. So, so two days ago, or yesterday, Michael Carter Williams, the, the magic uh, tweet that he is out. And they said they're going to make Terrence Ross available to, uh, you know, he's not going to play, but they're going to have him as active. So it's basically going to be a seven man rotation. So I pivot off John Wall and Trevor Ariza to get um, Chase on Randall in because he's going to play close to the entire game with no Michael Carter Williams. Sure enough, after lock. Oh, Michael Carter Williams jogs out of the the locker room and ends up playing. And to, to add insult to injury, I go back to see what my original lineup would have been. It would have been like a four X night, because uh, John Wall went off, Trevor Reza went off, and I'm just like, I'm left with Chase on Randall who plays like 25 minutes. So that was literally I I was that upset. I was like, I can't even get a video up. But so tonight, thinking, all right, it's gonna be a better night. Literally, I had to take notes of everything, all the bad variants that happened. Literally, I have a notebook. I had to take notes of all the reasons how I did not end up winning first place tonight. So let's go over my lineup. John Wall, Jalen Brunson, Kawhi Leonard, Jordan Awara, Carl Anthony Towns, Donovan Mitchell, Thonsa Santetokounmpo, Kelly Olenek. Still finished, um, you know, really well. Still won 300 off 100. But the fact that I didn't get first in this is absolutely just, just mind-boggling. So let's go over um, everything that happened. So number one, a couple players I didn't have. Russell Westbrook. He was the chalk in this. It's like a 25-point game in the third quarter. Brad Beal gets injured and then the Pistons bring it back so Chalk Westbrook plays the entire fourth quarter without Beal and ends up getting a triple double so that's number one number two Chalk Jason Tatum plays the entire second half number three Houston Minnesota we just saw this game yesterday Close game. Christian Wood also out. So what happens? The Rockets blow him out. Also, Kelly Olenek. So, low owned Kelly Olenek. Foul trouble. Four fouls early in the third quarter. Misses out on a good amount of minutes. Uh, and then the blowout. So, Kelly Olenek, low, low owned Kelly Olenek, low owned John Wall, blowout. Carl Anthony Towns, yes, he was chalk. Also blowout, though. So there's three players barely played the fourth quarter. Like John Wall, I think, checked back into the fourth for like 30 seconds. It's just like, okay. Number four, Donovan Mitchell. Low owned. On pace for, what, 70? Blowout.
And the last one, just to the, the cherry on top of everything. Low-owned Kawhi Leonard. Blowout. But, 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 so all that, all that being said, according to, according to this guy on Twitter, I got lucky tonight. I got lucky because Jason Tatum had a bad first quarter. So that means I got lucky with all this that happened. So let's go over the first play, place line, right? So I'm 13 points back, right? The amount of things that happened that I didn't end up winning this. So, right, he, he got chalk Westbrook, 60%. Obviously the Beal injury plus that game stays close. Um, 13 points, all I need. So literally, if any one of those games stays close, Houston, Minnesota stays close, the Clippers, the game stays close, or Utah game stays close, I probably win. Or Kelly Olenek doesn't get in foul trouble. Uh, absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Uh, but that is it for the look back. I know a lot of you guys on Patreon had big nights, so congrats to everyone. Uh, but yeah, even, even on good nights like this, like the amount of stuff that happened tonight literally is making me go insane the last few days, guys. It has literally been making me go insane. Um, but that's it for the tilting. So that was what I got three, four minutes, but that was again, literally a notebook. Um, all right, enough, enough of that. So, uh, let's talk about this three game slate. We have two of the three games out right now. Hawks and Nuggets at 226 and a half over under Nuggets, four and a half point favorites, Magic, Lakers, 208 over under the Lakers are seven point favorites. So let's start off with Portland and Toronto. On the Portland side, really the big news that we're waiting for is Damian Lillard. He's currently questionable. So this changes, obviously, everything. If Damian Lillard is out, I'm going right back to CJ McCollum. Um, if you faded him last night, you got insanely lucky. Shot 8 of 26, CJ McCollum. So, yeah, if there's no Damian Lillard, I'm, I'm going right back to CJ. Clear spend up, in my opinion. Uh, the two centers, the Ennis Cantor and Nurkic, probably not going to get to either. Like, Cantor had a good game off the bench in 29 minutes. Um, I guess you can still go there in tournaments. Nurkic was on about a 20 minutes limit. He played 19. He's a good point per minute guy. Keep an eye on this. If like Yusuf Nurkic starts and there's no minutes limit, then I actually would have some interest in him. So that's one to keep an eye on. If they're gonna keep if they're gonna continue to limit Nurkic's minutes, then that kind of just takes him and Cantor out of play. Um, the other wings, Norman Powell should play big minutes in his first game. He played 36 minutes. Uh, like he's a fine option, but again, very, very reliant in the scoring, not going to do a ton of the peripheral stats. Robert Covington at 6K, he should play, you know, low to mid 30s minutes. Uh, a guy that can stuff a stat sheet. So I think Covington's a fine option. And then uh, Mello at 5'3". I guess he's playable. If Damian Lillard's out, yeah, he's playable because he has to do more offensively. And then Derek Jones Jr. at 4'3". Uh, did lose some minutes with Norman Powell. Um, so again, 20, the minutes are trending down in Jones Jr. And the price is up. I'm probably going to stay away there. Now, if Damian Lillard is in, then that kind of just makes everyone like subpar plays. I don't know if there's one standout play for me on Portland if Damian Lillard is in. So that that's, again, big, big news. What we'll to keep an eye on. We'll go over this uh, more tomorrow. Moving on to Toronto. So I just I just don't like this Toronto team. But yeah, Van Fleet, Siakam, Lowry. Again, one of these guys will have a good game. It's Ben Siakam last couple nights with 51 and 53 fancy points. Uh, it's a really good matchup. So if you want to go back to the ball there with Siakam, I'm perfectly fine with that. Again, the minutes will be there for all three of these guys. But they've all been just a little bit up and down, right? So, like, I feel like just based off box scores uh, and people box score watching, Siakam would be the most popular. That doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be the highest scorer of these three, right? It could definitely be Van Fleet or Lowry. It almost just feels like, like a guessing game. So... I might like keep an eye on this. If Siakam's going to be like really, really popular, I'm fine just going to Van Fleet or Lowry. So, and you can even play two of these three guys. To be honest, like I said, it's a really good matchup. So, like I think all three of the main guys for Toronto are solid. My issue with these three is it's just trying to nail down which one's going to have the good game, right? So that that's the main issue. Now, like Robert Cumpton actually is a pretty solid defender, so maybe he'll be on Siakam. Whereas like Van Fleet Lowry might be matched up with like Lillard and CJ, who are not good defenders. So maybe that's a slight boost to them. Uh, scrolling down a bit, OG Ananubi at 6-1, just a fair play. It, it, the minutes will be there. You know, he's a guy that is actually has a somewhat high floor. I'm expecting around 30-ish fancy points from him. So, again, fair play. Boucher, they just don't want to give him minutes. They're trending down. Uh, let's see. Gary Trent Jr. at 4.8K should play about 30 minutes. And you can use him, but he's super reliant on the scoring. And then everyone else is kind of just stay away from me. I guess the one guy I'll mention is Aaron Baines because this is a bigger uh, Portland team, but... I just, 
like he's like kind of like fringe even in the rotation right now like he's barely playing so hard to feel confident about any of the other toronto uh, pieces so let's move on to atlanta and denver so trey young at the top at 8.9k i actually do like a lot for tournaments the minutes have been up on him recently 38 38 36 in a blowout so it's looking like trey is going to play close to 40 minutes a night i do kind of like trey here at this price i also like clint capella big denver team they're going to need him out there my one concern foul trouble against Jokic, which is definitely realistic right so that that's the only thing i'm worried about with capella if he stays out of foul trouble and plays 30 minutes there's there's a pretty good chance he will get you there so capella is more the high risk high reward because the foul trouble uh against Jokic there john collins had a big game last game i just don't know what to make of john collins like normally he's kind of been like Normally he's he's just been like all right when all three of Trey Young and Capella with with Trey Young Capella and Collins are all playing, uh, but he's had a couple big games mixed in here. Um, so I think he's more of a contrarian play. Like for me, I think I'd rather get to Capella. But if you think Capella gets in foul trouble, then yeah, John Collins is, is probably the guy you want to look to as a pivot. Gallinari at five two revenge game narrative. I just I don't like playing Gallinari. You guys know that. Uh, DeAndre Hunter currently questionable. That is pretty big news because Bo- uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich started the last game. Um, now, he did only play 21 minutes, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, that is actually a little bit weird. I wasn't follow- following that game too much, but 21 minutes when he was starting. Okay. I think if he starts, he's in play, but that's obviously not a good sign that he only played 21 minutes when he got inserted in the starting lineup. Herter, eh. Tony Snell, ugh. Uh, Skyler Mays is going to play the backup point guard. He probably plays about 10 minutes, but uh, that's not something we can go to with confidence. And that is it for Atlanta. So let's move on to Denver. Nicole Jokic at the top at 10.4K, I think is one of the best spin-offs. Just again, very, very safe with upside. Triple-double, uh, triple-double upside, honestly. So yeah, really do like Jokic at the top. Big news is Aaron Gordon. Got to keep an eye on this. I think he's going to be available. But um, we'll get more confirmation on this tomorrow. If Aaron Gordon is available to play, then I don't know if I get to any of the other secondary plays for Denver. Now, if Aaron Gordon's out, then yes. Like Jamal Murray, MPJ, Barton, all in play for tournaments. So that's some, that's one to keep an eye on. If Aaron Gordon starts and there's no minutes limit for him, I could see taking a shot on him. Um, like I think he'll probably play mid-30s minutes and it's a good matchup. So yeah, Aaron Gordon news is pretty big. But yeah, with him... With Aaron Gordon there, like Millsap, no thank you. Like I'm, I'm staying away from everyone else really uh, on the Denver side. I also finished up with Orlando and the Lakers, and oh boy, this is this could be a headache. Um, so Terrence Ross questionable. We don't know if what Wendell Carter Jr. and Otto Porter are going to be available. If everyone is out again, then it's going to be an eight-man rotation. And Michael Carter Williams, well, apparently again, if he's out, I guess that means he's going to play. Uh, but yeah, we'll keep an eye on this. So Michael Carter Williams starts. I think he's actually a good play because he's he should play over 30 minutes. Chuma Okiki had a big game in 37 minutes. Really, a lot of these guys have big games because of the minutes, right? Dwayne Bacon played uh 34 minutes. How many minutes did Ennis play? Ennis played 36, right? It just because they had they had such a tight rotation. Ken Birch, I loved him. He was a core play for for us in Patreon for 52 fancy points last game. So um it would really be if if they use the same starting lineup and again i would assume that michael carter williams would start instead of chase on randall then really ken birch to the five i think looks really good um i think you know bacon basically the whole starting five out of interest in um because again eight man rotation they're all going to play big minutes now things could change if Otto porter's available if rj hampton's available if one of Carter Jr. is available, if Terrence Ross is available. So it's kind of hard to break down at the moment. So again, this will be something we'll, we'll monitor going into uh, tomorrow. And finally, the LA Lakers. So a little more clear cut. We kind of know what's going on here. No AD, no LeBron. Like the main three guys here. Good ma- Like two bad teams going up against each other. Again, the Lakers are not good without LeBron and AD. And this game should stay competitive. So the main three guys, Harold, Kuzma, Schroeder, I like all three. All three of these guys should play mid-30s minutes. Um... And again, they are going to be uh, leading this offense. So I like all three of these guys. Again, all three should play big minutes. Uh, Talon Horton Tucker, again, a game was a blowout. He, he got extended a bit, played 32 minutes. But the previous two games, 19 and 19, he's not out of play, but uh, the minutes have been a little bit up and down for him. Markeith Morris at 5.1K feels a little pricey. Like I would just rather spend up for a couple extra thousand for Schroeder, Harold, Kuzma. Wes Matthews, absolutely not. Uh, Alex Trusso at 4.4K probably plays around 20 minutes. But again, that, that price feels a little bit uh, too much. KCP, yeah, you can use him. He'll play probably 25 to 30 minutes, but super, super reliant on the scoring. 
And uh, yeah, that's really it for uh, the Lakers. And I think that's going to do it for the video as well, guys. So if you haven't enjoyed the content so far, I would really appreciate it if you have a like button on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you don't upload videos you don't want to live. I will be doing a YouTube live stream. I know it's only three games. I'll do a quick one, uh, probably about 30 minutes uh, or an hour before lock. So uh, come come check out the live stream, guys. Again, we'll go over all the news that we got because uh, it's important, right? There's, there's a lot up in the air, right? If we just... Briefly go over it again. Damian Lillard, questionable. Um, we don't know for sure if Aaron Gordon's going to play. And then uh, all the magic, right? So that that's really the big one is those four guys that may be available, may not. And that, that will change the slate. So, um, yeah. Have a good night, guys. Uh, thanks again for checking out the video. And I'll see you all tomorrow uh, in the live stream.